Does this mean your Broncos have no chance against Dallas? Slim chance. Slim? Slim. I thought he left town, right? Yeah, we'll say, okay, they got no chance, you see? You don't put him on a bus up out of Dallas, they got no chance. Skip, I just don't believe the Broncos' offense can score enough points to keep up with the uh, Cowboys' offense. Mm. And that's what it comes down to. When you play the Cowboys, you play these teams with these potent offenses, can your offense, even if you've got a great defense, because eventually, Skip, if you go, if they go a quarter here or, and not score a touchdown, or they go to the half and they only got 10 points, mm. you know it's just a matter of time because they're so explosive. When you look at the receiver set they have, you look at the running game, you look at the offensive line. Now, they, it says, to, I, I, I've been reading that Tyron Smith isn't going to play. They're going to kick, kick Terrence Steele to left tackle. Lyle Collins is going to come back to his customary position. Okay, but, and you still got Zach Martin. Mm -hmm. they, they can run the football. They, didn't, they haven't shown mm -hmm. the ability to run the football because Zim, the, the, uh, the head coach and the defensive coordinator for mm -hmm. the Minnesota Vikings says, we're going to make Cooper Rush beat us. Yep. Well, he did. He threw the ball well enough to beat you. Mm -hmm. The running game, uh, uh, Gallup and Zeke did not have big days. Mm -hmm. they, as a matter of fact, they were very pedestrian. I just do not believe. And I think the Broncos have a very good defense, Skip. They're not, I mean, they're not 2015 defense, mm -hmm. but they're good. I just don't know if Teddy Bridgewater and that offense can score enough points or can match that score for score. You can't turn the ball over against this team. Mm. You can't put, a, put, put your defense on a short field. You're going to have to make Dallas drive the football. But I think Dallas is good enough. From what I've seen, especially with Dak chomping, chopping, chomping at the bit yep. <laughs> to get back in there, Skip, they're going to be raring to go. And they're at home. Mm. And the Cowboy fans feel that this is something special. You feel like this is something special. They want to show that they're special. I just think it's going to be too much for the Broncos to overcome, and I think they're going to win by double digits. Do you really? Well, Skip, the line has been going back and forth. It was at one ten to ten. Mm -hmm. I saw nine and a half. I see nine. So I don't know what it's going to be. It's nine and a half right now. Go ahead. But I do believe they'll cover. I believe they'll cover this spread by more than ten points. Yes. Man, I hope you're right. But I remind you, Mr. Hall of Famer, once upon a time, Denver Bronco Shannon Sharp. <laughs> you have been raving all year dating back to the preseason, about your Denver Bronco defense. Mm -hmm. Am I right about yes. that? Because I'm looking at a defense that has a young man that I wanted dearly to be a Dallas Cowboy. Patrick Sertan is at one corner. Kyle Fuller's at the other corner. Justin Simmons is at one safety. Kareem Jackson's at the other yeah. safety. You loved him before the yeah. year started, right? Yeah. And on offense... You have raved since college about Jerry Judy. He's now he was yeah. hurt for a while, but he's, he's back. back. He's back. And first you, game back. you told me he was the best receiver yep. in that draft, mm -hmm. and I said no. It's C.D. Lamb, and he's there. He's going to play Sunday. Right. And Cortland Sutton has been really good out he of Southern really Methodist well. yep. University, and now he's going home, so yeah. to speak, to play at Jerry yeah, World. Tim Patrick. Yep. They Tim Patrick. Nice Noah Fant's been pretty good. Melvin Gordon can run the rock yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Not no bad. offense in, uh, in uh, the protocol situation with COVID. That, yep, so. that's, that's a good one. Okay, so no no offense, but the point is they just beat a Washington team that I still have some respect no, for. No, you don't. I do. I, I've told you from the start, they're pretty good. I think Philly's a little bit better. They're the number one threat, but, but Washington was the team that you liked the most. I did. Okay? Before. And they just went to Denver they and lost. lost 17 to 10. Right. And Teddy Bridgewater wasn't very good, but he, he can be always good enough, just good enough to beat you, right. right? Because I will never, ever forget that fateful night on a Sunday night at New Orleans when he had to step in for Drew Brees. Yeah. Remember this? Yeah. And my Cowboys were off to the races, and Dak had thrown parties. Remember this? Yeah. On the Giants and at Washington and on the Dolphins. Yeah. yeah. Told and, you you weren't good, though. And there, you, you told me Dak wasn't eating. No, I told you your team wasn't oh, good because okay. you were playing cream puffs. Okay, and here we went to New Orleans, and they did have a defense, but they didn't have a lot of offense on that night. They, they managed to kick four field goals to get to 12. Dak couldn't get my team past 10. There was a late rally, and they had a shot maybe on a Randall Cobb throw down the middle late in the game that didn't quite connect, and they lost 12 to 10 to Teddy Bridgewater who went 5-0 and oh, right. standing in for Drew Brees. Right. Right? Well, Skip, if the game was at home, I might be willing to say, Skip, I think the Cowboys win, but they're not going to cover. Mm. But Dak is a very different player in 2021 than he was then. Mm. Dak is an MVP candidate. Dak was not an MVP candidate then. He is in complete control. He has 
I mean, he, he's like saying he's like Rain Man when it comes to this offense now. You look at the way he carries himself. You look at the way the manner in which he behaves in the pocket. This yep. is a different Dak now than what he was then. Okay. And the key difference I've been telling you was he finally did get paid, and he really got paid right. $75 million he makes just this year. Some people would consider that a burden I've got a to bargain. live up to. Well, it may be a bargain <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, long run, but yeah. all of a sudden – I'm saying Dak is in a new serene comfort zone yeah. where it's like, I'm a made man. Right. Now I can heave a sigh of relief. It's not me versus Jerry. I'm not playing for a contract. I'm not betting on myself. He paid me. Right. He, he got the protection of the contract. Because a lot of skip his mind's free. Okay. He his got nothing to worry about. Free, I'm good. That, that's the way he's played. Yes. Uh, I'm also going to remind you that your Denver Broncos are second in the National Football League in points allowed. Yeah. I still think they're dangerous on defense. You have completely just yeah. sold them out. Yeah, you, you got no use for them after you raved about them. You told me they were going to be really good on defense. They did give up Von Miller last week, but he wasn't contributing at a high level. So help right. me out. Are, are they just fodder for my Dallas Cowboys? Are okay. they just going to be so much meat on the hoof in Texas? Okay, you tell me You tell me what's so impressive. They beat the Giants, they beat the Jags, yep. they beat the Jets, they beat Washington. Okay. Well, they won their first three against those three bad teams. Yeah, I'll guess, give you yeah. that. Then they lost to the Ravens, they lost to Pittsburgh, they lost to the, the Raiders, Raiders and, and, and they lost to the Browns. Okay. And then they bounced back when I least expected it and got to four and four by beating Washington, yeah. a team you loved. In fact, you you pushed, you went all in on Washington. You took the field, but but it was mostly on Washington. It was mostly because I thought Fitz Magic was going to be there, and he uh, got hurt opening week. Uh, I think opening week. Yeah, he did. Okay. And so now so I'm it's with, Tyler Taylor Heineke, uh, right? Yeah, now I'm stuck with Taylor Heineke. Yeah. And that was, so that's what. So that's what you. That's what I got. That's what I'm stuck with. Mm. Well, again, that front seven you told me is really Skip, good. you know good where that front seven has not performed like you thought they would. That front seven has been a, a major disappointment. If we, if, if we want to talk about disappointments, I think of disappointments, the Washington football team defense yep. has been a major disappointment, especially the front seven when you have all those first rounders up there and it has not materialized. Mm. Are you willing to concede your best? No, I, I, why, why I got to concede right well, now? Well, you don't have to do anything. I was just offering you the option. Nah, if you nah, want to. Nah, you nah, took I, the feel for 10 want, cases of Diet Mountain you Dew. Want me to grovel you Dallas. want me to grovel over here? I'm going to rake you over the coals <laughs> the rest of the year. But here's what I'm up against this Sunday. What? Uh, my man, C.D. Lamb, sprained his ankle, and oh, I think it's that's... pretty bad. He's been limited in practice. And, uh, by the way, my man Amari did suck it up and play, but he's got a tweaked hamstring. He's been limited. Blake Jarwin has a hip injury that I think is pretty serious, and I don't think he's going to be able to play. I'm just trying to figure out, man. And finally, I thought Michael Gallup was supposed to be on track to be back for this game, and now they're saying, nah, not quite yet. Yeah, because Cedric Wilson is playing quite well. Okay. Not right. quite yet. Scott, Maybe I wasn't as tough as I thought I was. Mm. Because these guys playing with injuries and putting up these monster numbers with tweaked hamstrings and ankles, I mean, I was struggling. I was getting injections in my ankles, and I'm struggling to make it. Mm. And they out there on ankles and just be balling out. I don't know. That's the way of the world today. But I got to live with it because uh, uh, it's possible all, f well, three of the four who's not going to gallops out anyway. But, no, but no, it's, Clarence it's Hill Jr. I read Clarence Hill Jr. And he said um, uh, uh, C.D. Lamb's going to play. Well, does he? Does he know that for a fact? Well, I mean, he's not what he's saying. A lot of people thought back. Dak was going to play last week. Well, hold on. Ain't no people thought. Now, I want to know what the NFL is going to do about this. Because Amari Cooper said we knew Friday that Dak was not going to play. Now, I remember we got fined $50,000 when I said we knew John wasn't going to play, and he didn't play, and they just listed him as, uh, out the day of the game. I they fined us $50,000. I'd say that's fineable. Yeah, I'll fine them. I want, yep. I want restitution. Yep. I would agree with that. Yeah. I'm dry snitching. I will not agree with you on your pick. I don't think they're going to be able to win by 10 or more points. I think it's going to be closer than that. I think it'll be a battle. I think it'll be lower scoring. I'm going Dallas 24 to 17, but closer than you think. Teddy will keep them in the game, as will their defense, allowing only the second most points scored. 34-17. 34-17? I, yep. I would bet on it, except I'm not going to bet against my team. I but but I will remind you on Monday morning that you picked 34-17. Yeah.
Okay. I might not come in Monday morning because they got a game on Sunday night. <laughs> mm. They got a game Saturday. Oh, they being the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so there's a good oh, chance I might not come oh. in. And especially if Alabama don't do it with Alabama's supposed to do on Saturday. Mm. Can I do Zoom? Mm. <laughs> you can just Zoom right out of here. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed. Or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.